Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we are going to be doing a few things. We are going to be opening up two new locations for our fast and fresh fast food franchise. One in Murray Hill and one in Lower Manhattan. They are both thousand square meter buildings. So you'll probably imagine it's going to be making quite a bit of money and you will be surprised where it leads us to. We also run into a bit of other with Ingrid finally. She is going to try to mess with our business a little bit, and I think we came out on top in the end, to be quite honest. As well as that, we also end up, you know, pretty, pretty good with the Rivals leaderboard. And I am really excited to see where this leads to, especially considering some of the things I was able to do towards the end of the video with some locations that I was able to snag. And honestly, there's one that I kind of hit a brick wall on. I can't wait till you guys see that as well. But of course, as usual, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. We are 50 subscribers away from 500, which was my actual end of year goal. We're pretty close to hitting it, hopefully near the end of April. But uh, it's been really, really awesome to see the support from you guys. I really, truly appreciate it. And all the comments you guys have given, it's been really, really insightful. And I, I really, really love talking to you guys. It's, it's pretty fun. But anyway, uh, go ahead and give that thumbs up as well if you like what you see. And of course, here we go. All right, guys, so to catch up. So what I've already done is I've gone ahead and set up the preliminary layout of the actual appliances and the cash registers and whatnot. What I want to do essentially is use this as a blueprint for another location that I just recently purchased here, which is over here in lower Manhattan. I've already started the started the business. It just needs the appliances and obviously the interior and whatnot, but it's just fast and fresh LM for lower Manhattan. And it's also another thousand square meter, 40 traffic, 75 capacity, just like this guy here, except he's 47. Obviously my intentions here are to try to boost my income because I'm still, I'm surprised, frankly, because I've actually let the game run a few days here since we last saw each other, but nothing. There's nothing popping up in the garment district. So this leads me to believe that, and I may be mistaken here, but it leads me to believe that I need to just expand out to all the other retail locations that are available to me because I don't really have much of an option otherwise. Now, I'm hoping that after I get this guy blueprinted and obviously this one finished, I could just immediately go into this one without worry. I'm trying to save as much money as I can at the moment because I will be having another delivery coming in as well. On top of the fact that I'm going to need to order a bunch of stuff in order to fill these places up. But yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to basically blueprint this. But what I've been doing is kind of just getting things set up. And I figured, you know what? I think I better start showing you guys what's going on before I do anything. But what I wanted to do here is I have eight restaurant booths, like what I'm holding right here. I'm going to have them lining the sides here, maybe, or I might actually change it up and put them here. I really don't know just yet, but I, I'm basically going to have the eight tables and chairs and the eight booths. And then I'm going to have basically a bunch of interior stuff as well from Mike Bohog coming in. Well, let's see what that looks like. Hopefully everything pans out. All right. I think having you know, 32 place sittings plus the booths should be more than enough at a time, but I guess we'll see. But yeah, let's let's get these squared away and um, move on from there. So enjoy the time lapse and I'll catch up with you here shortly. Okay, so everything else is now inside, and I'm sure I'll probably think of some other things to add. I'm kind of looking at their seating arrangement, and honestly, I'm fine with it because what I'm going to plan on doing here is using these as a barrier of sorts. 
to kind of direct people. And I'll, I'll need to change the uh, interior, interior design, if you will, of the uh, positioning of the registers themselves. I'm hoping this accomplishes the goal that I want. Basically, the center area is going to be, obviously, the lines for each register. So hopefully that pans out and how I want it to work. But yeah, let's let's get these squared away again, time lapsing, and we'll we'll move on from there. All right, so this is what it essentially looks like. I wouldn't say it's, you know, too bad. I mean, it's got a good amount of greenery. It's got separated spaces here and just got to make sure that this is all correct. Let's let's fix this stuff here. Let's reset that. We'll just move this line straight down. why it wants to curve that works for me yeah I don't think it looks too bad I I like it it's it's got a nice look to it and I don't know I think it's nice now these cues really don't want to cooperate do they there we go but yeah I think this will be a, a, a good little uh blueprint it's not really little, obviously, it's a, it's a large blueprint, but I think it'll be very affordable because we're not swimming in money right now with what we got at the moment, but hopefully it won't be terribly expensive. Now, this only cost me around most, maybe 350000 so if I save this as a blueprint, which I will do right now. Oh wait, no, I gotta, what am I doing? I have to do this interior designer, hello. Let's go back. Save layout as blueprint, there we go. So what we'll call this fast and fresh M1 hyphen Delta. Let's get, there we go. So we'll save that and I'll upload that here in a little bit. But if I do that now and go back and talk to Christian Behood, let's see what they say. See, that's where it's coming from. And I'm not sure where, the, what, like, what is this installation fee at this point? Because this, this definitely did not cost $737,000. I can tell you that with absolute certainty. And we don't even have the, we don't even have this stuff. We don't have the storage shelves yet. So there's something, something going on there in that regard. It's a little bit more expensive than I thought it would be, but I think we can manage to save up that much money. We got to still put the shelves in here for the storage, but beyond that part, I mean, we, we should be okay to save up and, and get that done. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the days until I can get that much money and obviously get the storage shelves in here and I'll save that blueprint once again and then upload it too. So everyone can use it if they want to, but we'll, we'll do that and we'll get that set up. And then after both stores are good to go, we'll obviously hire people on, get them ready to go. And then we will start the logistics process and we'll see where we're at there uh you know income wise so see you here sure okay guys i'm almost there as you can see i have seven hundred ninety eight thousand dollars currently though christian behood is closed right now as well as another place that i needed to get in touch with but i it's, so there was an update to the game and it made some changes on a couple things and one of the changes it made was on rivals itself so what ended up happening was 
Ingrid had basically set on an attack and she tried to take over my employees. Now I've already solved the problem. I wish I could show you. I thought I was recording and I was not, unfortunately. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. So basically what ended up happening was she sent a, a 12 employee attack. So she tried to take over my 12 best employees. And what that what it does is it sends you a text message stating like from the employee saying, that, hey, I've got a business offer from Ingrid Schneider. I'm seriously considering it. And if you want to you know, retain me, I would like this salary because this is what she's offering me and it'll offer a number. In the case of all my employees, it was roughly between four, three and four dollars more than what they're currently making. And it was random. It was just basically a random set of 12, uh, 100% employees essentially. And I, I ended up just paying them all the, the salary that she was offering because, you know, I don't want to have to deal with getting 12 new employees, training them all up to hundred percent again. And, you know, it's just, it's a big waste of time for me at least right now. So I just negotiated with all of them and I, I accepted all their offers. So I got to keep all my employees and she failed on her attack. Now, the other thing that occurred since there was an update, it changed something because I was number 17 and now I'm number nine. I don't know how that happened, but it did. I've also noticed that it also allows me now to negotiate with her employees. So for instance, I can just click here at dad's liquor store, click show employees. And I can see what her current employees are, what their customer service score in this case, or, you know, cleaning, et cetera, whatever their primary skill score is. And then I can hit negotiate and we'll just pretend that we're going to get Dolores here. So I can hit negotiate. It'll send me a text message from Dolores saying, okay, thank you for considering me. Here's the, you know, let's discuss the wage for this job. And she'll offer me 5679 in this case. And you know, for her specifically, because she's a high percentage, you know, customer skill, customer service skill. But I can negotiate with her, probably meet in the middle. I'm not entirely sure exactly how it works, but I mean, I imagine it's going to be the same as the, the healthcare negotiation. And then, you know, we can go from there that she can decline or she can accept. I don't need Dolores, so I'm not going to try to negotiate because I don't want to, I just don't, I don't want her. So I'm going to decline this for right now. But in the future, we could consider that for sure. But basically, we're really close to, to getting more things from Ingrid in terms of attacks and whatnot. So essentially what they updated is they are now doing rival counter attacks and rival, rival attacks. So we can price manipulate, which means I can lower prices below market value, which will force our rivals to lower their prices as well. And consequently, so can they, they can do the same thing to me, which they've already done. I've had to change my prices on all my businesses almost across the board. Uh, we could do market mani manipulation where we basically open up a business that is similar or the exact same type of business as their business and sell the same products. And basically that lowers the demand for that particular product, obviously within that particular market, thus hurting them, hurting their income, etc. And then finally, as I just showed you, employee poaching works both ways. She could try to poach my people. I can, you know, meet that salary and I can do the same thing to her. Um, they, they certainly have made a, a definite difference already. I wish I could have kept this up. I'm sorry. I didn't get it recorded, but it, it is what happened. And she even sent me a text message. What'd she say? Where is it? Yeah, there you go. I assume you're very happy with your most skilled staff, right? Well, I don't know how to say, it. I don't speak German. I've got my eye on them, so I bet they're going to be really interested in hearing the salary I'm offering compared to your little establishment. Well, good for you, Ingrid. I still kicked your butt on that one. I kept all my people. <laughs> yeah, she attempted to poach 12 employees. So that's that's what we're looking at right now. We're, we're definitely facing a, a reckoning from our rival here, Ingrid, in uh, the garment district. So the other thing that they also changed is they they change the flow of, of customers for expensive items. So in order to balance things out, it says they, the expensive items now have a lower customer flow. Items not listed as primary or additional items have lower customer flow and fruit and veggies now have a higher selling price and fast food was slightly over buffed in the last patch and this has been fixed. So basically what has happened for me, I went from around 99 to 105,000 per day. And as you can see up here, this is actually the highest it's been since I, I reloaded my game after updating to the patch. So 
I'm almost at 70,000 with all my stuff now. And it has drastically changed my per week as well. I was almost at six. I think it was over Ingrid here. In fact, when I first loaded up, I was at, I think, 650 or something like that. And it just, boom, dropped down quite a bit. So that's what we're going to be looking at moving forward is, is, you know, obviously, since this is experimental, it's balancing. They're balancing things out. But anyway, I'm almost ready. As soon as Monday rolls around, I'll be ready to actually get the fast and fresh lower manhattan location all ready to go and we can get employees in there as well but i i'm gonna fast forward to that point i am currently training customer service and cleaning employees here for the murray hill location and we'll get that place open we'll see what that looks like and uh go from there but i will see you as soon as the lower manhattan location is good to go we'll see you soon Alrighty, everyone. So, as you can see here, we made $103,516.30. We have finally opened up the Murray Hill location for Fast and Fresh. I also snagged a thousand square meter building in Midtown for Fast and Fresh Midtown, which we will also get that good and going soon as the lower Manhattan business is filled up with employees. Now, we're going to take a look here and check our inventory and pricing, which we are the trendsetter across the board here. Now, as you can see, I, I think I've learned, and I'm not sure if it's in the F1 menu or not. Let's see. What do we are? What are we in? Okay. So let's go to. No, nope, that's not what I want. Hmm. There's no like section for Bizman, is there? All right, never mind. F1 menu not working out for me right now. Anyway, I'm not sure if yellow means these are prices that customers don't like, or you know, are they gonna are they gonna pay for it? Stuff like that. Because I can go up here. I'm wondering when it's going to turn red. $8 is when it turns red. Okay, so they won't pay eight. Five ten is the lowest market price. So we could do that. It's okay. That's how you could tell. So I can go to $5. I'm 10 cents lower than market price. So I'm setting the lowest market price in Murray Hill. So if I keep going until it stops over here, That's how you know when it's going to be the lowest market price. And I don't think anybody is selling pizza. I better go to Market Insider real quick. <laughs> is anybody selling pizza? There's four businesses selling pizza at $29.90. Wow. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm frankly confused. When does it stop? What if I just do 35? Still the lowest. 45. 4160. So if I go to $40, people are going to pay for that because it's less than everything else. That's insane. All right. So what if I go to 10? So 850. Okay. That's the way to do it. So we'll go to 840. 10. 768. 750. Sixteen. Sixteen. Whoa. Okay. Hold on here. Market Insider. What is the chicken kebab price here? One business is selling and it's me. Wow. That is insane. Okay. So. Why don't we do this then? We know they're not going to like that. So if we go there, $20. So what is 19? Okay. What was it like? $16? Oops. 16? Nope. We'll try. Let's do 22. See what happens. 401. 399. 
Gotta love that 99 center. All right, so we'll start with these prices. We'll see what happens with the day and see if we do all right or if we get creamed, really. I mean, we'll get a really good idea in the insight. We, we had 1,142 customers yesterday because obviously our prices were completely bare minimum. So of course everyone's gonna show up, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna let the day go forward. I'm hiring on some employees as well for the lower Manhattan location and we'll go from there. Okay, as you can see, we made $119,828. Let's take Gander at that location once again. Pricing, they don't like too much. <laughs> we still had more customers, however, but they're still okay. They, they are still fine with the pricing overall because it's still at 97%. They still definitely purchased They, you know, we, we were good. We, we sold a bunch. So I, I'm thinking right now we'll just pay attention to this, make sure as it goes through, you know, what is it going to look like moving forward in terms of our actual affordability, you know, and cost index, etc. So I'm thinking that we're okay to set prices this way and leave it like this for now. And, uh, you know, looking at how Murray Hill is 65, 11 and 24 between the classes here, percentage wise, comparing that to Manhattan, it's roughly the same, roughly. There's still more upper class in Murray Hill, but it's roughly similar. And I'm thinking we will be okay to probably have the similar pricing structure. I'll still do the same thing I just did, but as it stands, I mean, I'm surprised we haven't caught up to Ingrid based upon that, let alone this James Peters guy, but who knows? One thing I can do though, is start looking at, you know, can I buy out these employees now? And can I buy out her locations? Yeah, I can. Let's see. Let's do 125,000. Okay, rejected. 130 rejected 150 boom so we've bought out one of ingrid's locations now and all she has is cheap gifts a point of sales and shopping baskets and as usual these awful awful schedules like what what is this That's very strange. We'll just do that and leave it at that. Um, only 80 in stock. She sold zero in the last seven days. So I think that's for me. Yeah, it's for me. Never mind. So, you know, whatever there. Not very good traffic. We don't even know where this is. 46 Third Street. So that's that's our home street. Or was our home street, I should say. Let's look on Google Maps here. Yep, there it is right there. Opening in three hours versus hours, which is already open. Not, not a very good location, to be honest. What we'll do is we'll just leave it as is. We'll throw those people at our HR manager, have them all train up and whatnot. And hopefully, you know, it pans out. We're going to be losing money from this location. I feel like though, considering the, uh, these people have but it's whatever that was our first purchase of one of her properties let's see if she says anything which she doesn't look like she does which is unfortunate that'd be a cool opportunity to be like hey I can't believe you just bought me out here blah 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 etc <laughs> we'll get some of these here let's do 120 and a thousand there we go Said and good and gone. Let's just do a quick day forward here. And I'll take you guys along with me. Everyone's done training here. Do one more of these. 
I found this loop to be the best, so I have watching TV, playing video games, and reading a book. And boom. It's all good. I mean, it's really, really easy to keep up your happiness now. Oh, okay. Well, you're about to get some more anyway, so we're okay. 125. Not too bad. Looking pretty good, actually. All right. So I'm going to fast forward here. I'm going to get the lower Manhattan location going. And hopefully at that point, I'll have enough money, obviously, to get the Midtown location stocked up, etc. And good to go. And then employees for that as well. And we'll try to see, you know, can we actually... You know, hop over Ingrid here and... Oh, oh! We already have! Well, there we are. We are making more money than Ingrid at this point. So now we have a unique position of uh, trying to buy out her other businesses here. I, I don't know why you would keep this on. What is going on with your graphic designers here? You have so many graphic designers with such low score. Yeah, you're probably just bleeding money. I wouldn't want to buy you out. I'm just... Keep that there. So, okay, now she has five cups, which is on 3rd Street. So she has a few on 3rd Street here. 332,000 for five cups. Just jeans is 340. Okay. So at least we know what we're looking at in terms of what we need to take over for her. But now she's a lower rival. We, we are now ranked number seven out of the, the district. We're no longer... Down in the dumps. <laughs> We're getting there though, but it looks like our other rivals here, Terry and Huang and Jessica are in the top four. And there's this random John Eason. What's up, John? Your 14 businesses somehow making that much money? Okay, I see. Yep, there it is. Because you have two huge, yeah, two huge fast food restaurants. Pretty sure fast food is, is kind of king at the moment. I think the dynamic has somewhat changed because of the changes they made, even though it seems like they just nerfed it a little bit, but anyway, like I said, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to get Lower Manhattan going and then we'll see you there. All right, guys. So the Lower Manhattan location is now good to go. They are actually selling everything like hotcakes. I upped some stuff, so hopefully the logistics of it, you know, match out and whatnot, but we are looking at now 209,000 per day. And so Murray Hill Fast and Fresh is making roughly 65 to 67,000 per day. And then we are also looking at the Lower Manhattan location and they are making 73,000 per day now it looks like. In fact, they look how much they've jumped up. I did adjust prices once again. So we are doing well there. But uh, as it t comes to rivals, we are now number four. And that is literally opening just 2,000 square meter locations for fast food. That's it. Two locations, 1,000 square meters. We went from number 17 in the leaderboard to number four. We leapfrogged Jessica Johnson by 200,000 per week. I mean, literally, if we go to Google Maps right now, we'll notice that, oh, look at this. We have these available for rent, so we'll just snag these up here. Rent that. We'll do stuff with that. Don't worry. We'll, we will do things with that. But this is still open. The building owner, your rival, Ingrid Schneider, has declined. They can decline. Fascinating. Okay, so now we know. Ingrid is blocking my ability to rent this building. So that's another thing they could do to us that disallows us from, from competing. So we're, we're going to try to just rent as much as we can here. Let's see. This is another thousand. Who, who owns this? City of New York. <laughs> Mine. There's another one. Who owns this? No one. No one that we know. We're just, we're snagging 
all the locations we can that are a thousand square meters right now at least because that'll help us compete as we open more locations and stuff i'll just grab this one too but we got plenty of things to work with this is too bad that they can block me like this okay all right ingrid screw you <laughs> But yeah, that's what we're looking at. I'm, I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> that's ridiculous. You're trying to rent one of my buildings to expand your laughable little enterprise. Forget about it. Sei nicht albern, mein Liebling. Oh, Ingrid. You silly, silly, silly lady. All right, let's order this payout on this here. Now we have 1.2 million to work with, and this will allow us to call Christian Behood. Oh, you're not happy with your job, huh? I think I fixed you, though. Yeah, I did. Okay. Let me uh, talk to Christian Behood here. Oh, oh, they're closed today because it's Saturday. All right, that's fine. I think this is actually a good place to stop, to be honest. We have accomplished quite a bit. We've got both of our... Thousand square meter fast food locations, just churning out the money for us. We are now making 209,000 per day. We are number four on the rivals leaderboard, making a million a week. We could easily jump over John Easton here once we open up the Midtown location. Super easy. We'll eventually catch up to Huangguo. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, at this point we could, uh, start buying Ingrid out of her businesses too so wouldn't hurt to start trying to do that as well to be honest but uh yeah I think this is a good place to stop like I said so anyway if you like what you're seeing go ahead and hit that button below subscribe I will be like I said once this game goes live I will be doing a full rags to riches playthrough on the sandbox no objectives, no Uncle Fred, no loans, starting at zero dollars. We're going to make it big doing that for sure. But yeah, as usual as well, thumbs up if you like the video. And let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know how you're doing in your guys' playthroughs and uh, just say hi. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.